a white blur in the rearview mirror zigzagged up to us in the midst of heavy traffic. It was a Volkswagen wagon, filled with five teenage boys baiting me to race. There was nothing but taillights up ahead. I waved, they returned a less friendly gesture and spurted stupidly ahead. Off the next ramp with an empty country road stretching out straight as a rail, I gave in to temptation. The Nissan GTR is a time machine. Every time I floored it, my stomach lifted in opposition to the gravity of adulthood, and a small but rapturous part of me felt like those feral idiots in the VW, unbound, unbothered, rocketing down a road where consequence only existed in the next second. The GTR, which first arrived in the US in 2008, came of age in 2017 with its most significant update. The 565 horsepower sports coupe has a more pronounced lip and side sills to help with airflow, and the blocky rear is chunkier, more menacing. Godzilla is growing into its body. What does Godzilla in the wild elicit such reverence? It's part newness, part Nissan. It starts at $109,990, and Nissan sells only about $1,000 annually, roughly a tenth of the Porsche 911 and all its iterations. Just about anyone can identify 911, even if they mispronounce Porsche. GTR is rare. Young and special. Admirers of the GTR are, in their own minds I suspect, purer. Being in the know of a rare sports car, and a Nissan no less, keeps posers and dilettantes from tainting that exclusive GTR fan base. Godzilla fans know that it is quick, sick quick, hitting 60 mph in 2.9 seconds, and it is fast, blazing fast, attaining a top speed of 191 mph, according to car and driver. That quickness from the 3.8-liter twin-turbo V6 starts taking your breath away at the 2,000 RPMs range, but it keeps intensifying until hitting peak 467 pound-feet of torque between 3,300 and 5,800 RPMs. Staying on the accelerator can cause fear, every sense howling like the glorious engine noise, it is awesome in every sense of the word. The long, thin paddle shifters are mounted to the steering column, but the six-speed dual-clutch automatic is quicker and smarter. It knows what you want so it is best just to steer. While the handcrafted engine remains relatively the same since the beginning, with a sign plate by the one engineer who worked on that specific engine, the engineers keep tweaking the GTR, so the 565 horsepower is 20 horsepower more than last year's model. The most significant appeal of the GTR is its versatility. Not like a hatchback versatile, more like driver style versatile. It is immensely accessible. The long wheelbase, low center and near perfect weight distribution from a front mounted engine are complemented with an all wheel drive system that inspires confidence in less experienced drivers and tempts more experienced drivers to lose their, um, wagon. GTR is called Godzilla for how massively and surprisingly its power can erupt, yet for how docile and comfortably it can hold drivers on longer trips. It also comes roaring out of turns with better balance than any car we've driven. The most significant updates for 2017 are in Godzilla's living room. We drove back-to-back -back trips about 150 miles each to our neighbor state to the north, and had no fatigue or cramping as in other cars of this kind. Nissan says it beeped up the noise cancellation and dampened the harshness. We didn't notice any under road noise or back braking suspension stiffness. It might seem inconsequential in this context, but we averaged 23 mpg on our road trips. There is a spaciousness in its roofline and cabin, not enough to fit anyone behind the driver in the 2 plus 2 layout, but good enough to get two kids around town. And that trunk. At 8.8 .8 cubic feet, it fit my daughter's hockey bag better than some hatchbacks. The guy at the coffee drive thru whistled and said, nice saddle back interior. Wow. Technically, the Rakuta tan seats with hand-stitched interior were semi-aniline leather, meaning the dye maintained the texture of the surface, 
as part of the $4,000 premium interior package instead of plain Jane Ricard racing seats. The center dash has slimmed down from 27 controls to just 11, centered by an 8-inch touchscreen that is easy to use. Nissan's insistence on buttons, dials and way too many of everything has turned us off in other models, and we hope the controller dial on the carbon fiber center console, which supplements the touchscreen so you can zoom in and out of a map by just turning the dial, for instance, will make its way in all Nissan products. There's a balance inside and out, on the track or around town, uncommon in a supercar such as this. This rare breed of car, which makes novice drivers feel confident and confident drivers push their limits, is worth a stranger selfie, the admiring nods, even perhaps an appreciated taunt from a wagon full of fools. Godzilla is that good. At just over $46,000. The 2017 Nissan 370Z Nismo Tech we recently tested represents an incredible value for the money in sports cars. You just have to get over how boringly excellent it is. I wrote that last year when reviewing the 2017 Nissan 370Z Nismo Tech, and after sampling a $48,510 as tested 2018 version of the car, I can say that my mind hasn't changed one bit. As I noted last October, Z cars have been around for decades. The very first 240Z, badged as a Datsun, hit the streets in the US in 1969. The whole Z car idea, affordable, dependable performance in the two-seater, seemed to have run its course with the 300ZX. Production was halted briefly in the late 1990s before Nissan revived it with the 350Z. The 370Z Nismo Tech, the hottest version of the ride, is the latest and greatest. It might also be the end game, as there are rumors that Nissan could be sending the Zs to their final reward. That's a shame, but even though the 2018 Z is a slight update on the 2017, it is true that this platform is fairly aged in automotive terms. That was the case last year when we checked out the six-speed manual, and it remained so this fall when we slipped behind the wheel of the seven-speed automatic. The 370Z has basically been around for a decade, and it shows. Sometimes in a bad way with its unreconstructed mid-2000s glowing orange ness of instruments. But sometimes in a good way, such as when you lean into the marvelous 3.7-liter, 350-horsepower V6 and feel that sweet, naturally aspirated, all-motor power flowing to the back wheels. I tooled around New York and New Jersey for a few days in a pearl white 370Z and, no surprise, I had a fine time. The car's dinky, 7-inch touchscreen didn't scream tech. And the two-seater had no advanced driver assist features whatsoever. But for some fans of throwback piloting, that's all going to be perfectly cool. The base 370Z is only about 30 grand, but mine was thoroughly Nismoed up. It had a Nismo tuned engine, a Nismo engine cover, Nismo tuned exhaust, Nismo tuned suspension, Nismo alloy wheels, a Nismo shifter knob, Nismo upholstery stitching, a Nismo tachometer, and Nismo aerodynamics Subaru's Ascent 3 row crossover SUV is almost here. The Tribeca replacement has been confirmed for this month's 2017 Los Angeles Auto Show and will be on sale next year, as a 2019 model. All we have is a teaser shot showing part of the tailgate. However, spy shots of prototypes plus a thinly veiled concept unveiled during April's 2017 New York International Auto Show in at what's to come. Subaru appears to be taking a fairly safe route when it comes to the Ascent styling, but the vehicle should stand out due to its sheer size. It will measure 198 inches in length or about 9 more than the Outback. This should result in plenty of space for passengers in all three rows. The arrival of the Ascent will also mark the introduction of a new engine at Subaru. 
It will be a 2.4-liter turbocharged engine with the automaker's signature horizontally opposed layout. The engine will also feature direct injection, and naturally it will power all four wheels. Production will take place at Subaru's plant in Lafayette, Indiana. The plant is where the automaker produces its legacy, Outback and latest Impreza. The Ascent is about to enter a crowded segment with plenty of good options. The list includes the likes of the Chevrolet Traverse, Ford Explorer, Honda Pilot, Mazda CX-9, Toyota Highlander and Volkswagen Atlas. Stay tuned for the reveal on November 28th at the LA Auto Show. For further coverage on the show, head to our dedicated hub.